Hello everyone! In this video, I will be showing you how to implement notification services in your Node.js applications. But just before I start, I want to quickly mention that if you are new here, I basically do hardware, software, and generally tech-related stuff in my channel. So if you are into that kind of stuff, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Anyway, now let's get started. As you can see, this is the package that we will be using in this video. So, uh, generally using these packages standalone is not a good idea because we want to implement these kinds of packages into our project. So we first need to set up a basic project and go over from there. To make it much more understandable for you, I just open up a paint and draw the basic idea behind the, this video. Okay, so first we need to know the two packages that we will be using. The first one is very obvious and that is the node modifier package. The second one is the SSH2 package and this is the package that we use to create our SSH client inside our Node.js application. So we create our SSH client and we create our notification service. Then what we need to do is basically fire up an EC2 instance and for those who don't know what is that, it's basically a computer inside the AWS cloud. So we SSH into it and that could result in three cases. The first case is a successful connection. The second case is a failed connection. Then we have the third case and that is derived from the success and it is the closed connection. For each connection, our notification service will pop up a notification telling us that this occurred, this occurred or this one occurred. So let's do that right now. To do that, first we need to create a empty directory. So let's create it right now. We just call it notification. Then we pop that into VS Code. And while inside our VS Code, we need to initialize our node project. We can easily do that by npm init-y to give the default values. Now we are ready to install our packages. So first, the node notifier. We just copy that, paste it, and install it. Then we go to the SSH2, copy it, paste it, install it. So once that's done, let's create our entry file which is index.js now we are ready to use it so we just look at the ssh2 page and there we can see examples in our case i want to use the uptime on a server and i don't want an interaction interactive shell because the cases i have mentioned previously the three cases don't require an inter interactive shell so we just copy that and paste it right there uh, I don't go actually pretty deep on this code because it's very simple, but uh, we will see how that's work in a second. But first, we need to fill up some things. So first, our host IP address, then its port, and username, and our private key. So to fill up all of those uh, pro properties, we need to fire up an EC2 instance, and we can easily do that by heading over to the AWS Management Console. And there, we create a launch instance, and I will be choosing the Linux 2 AMI, select it. I want to make sure that we are in our free, uh, T2 micro so we can uh, get benefits from the free tier. And I just launch it. So yeah, I acknowledge that and launch the instance. So while that's launching, I just head over to my instance and copy the public IP address. Then we plug it in right so. Then uh, for our username, since we will be using an EC2, we just use the EC2-user. Now our private key. I've already generated my private key from the AWS, so it's right here. I just put it like so. Then I can easily give it to hereby Frankfurt's KPPEM. Also, if you try to use PPK, like for uh, the putty or something, it won't work. You need to use the PM PEM version. Now we are essentially ready to connect. So let's look up our instances running, which is great. 
then you can run our program by using the command node index.js. As you can see, it's successfully connected. Now let's plug in our notifications. To do that, we basically do the same thing with uh, the node notifier package. But just before I plug in the notifications, I want to briefly mention the type of notifications that we can use. There, as you can see, notifications are heavily operating system dependent. And what that means is that there are different types of notifications uh, that can be used by different operating systems. So as you can see, the node notifier package has that uh, amazing chart. It shows that uh, in which circumstances you need to, uh, you need to use uh, basically which notification service. So since I am on a Windows 10, I will go to that route and is before Win8. So it's no, so I will be using a toaster, which is the default one. If it's a previous version, then it, uh, I need to uh, basically uh, ask myself, does this OS has grown? If yes, I use that. If not, I use Balloon. And if so, on and so forth. You get the idea. Now, let's copy a example code like so and paste it right there. Then we need to define our uh, basically predetermined three cases that I've mentioned. First one is the success, and that is uh, basically right there. If we receive data and uh, if I receive it successfully, it will enter uh, here. So this is the success case. And there I can plug in a simple notification. The connection was successful. I just plug it that in right there and type the connection is successful. Great. Now uh, the closed connection. So I can just do that uh, in right there and the connection is closed. So that is this case. So now let's get rid of all of those and try it out if we run that as you can see we get the connection is successful and if i click that away we get the connection closed notification just like that great now let's look at how we can handle the error case as you can see they put uh, this line here but actually we don't catch it anywhere so we don't know how to use that so i just get rid of that and i will use something else instead and that is if you look up to the SSH2's page and type in error and let's look at the documentation and there we go. This is the method that we want to use and that is basically the client event method. What that means is that uh, it is just a method like the uh, ready or uptime. So we can just do that by connection on error as you can see it popped up and now we can just give it a function err then inside that console.log err so that should show us the error we will get that error in a second but if i run that again i want to show you something if i didn't do anything notification hang around like so it's basically just doesn't pop back in or do nothing so if i click it again then it goes back in and we can actually define that using some parameters and those parameters are the following so inside there as you can see we got wait parameter and if we initialize that it basically waits five seconds then pop back in so let's try it right now we just copy that and actually to use it we need to make it a bit more complicated like so we just copy that one and let's try it with the success case so where is our success case there it is i just plug it right like so copy that add the parentheses then we just copy this thing that is the title we don't need a message Instead, we can specify the weight parameter, which is true. Then get rid of this as well. Now let's try it out. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five, 
and it's gone. That's cool. So this is how you can actually create a timeout for your notifications. And one other, another thing is that, let's say if I want to do something when I click on the notification. To do that, I can actually specify it like so. So if we move on to there and in the trigger section like so, I can just copy that and paste it. So on click, as you can see, I can do some stuff. Let's just, just add a basic logging statement. The notification was uh, the click. click. There we go. So if I run that again and click on the notification, as you can see, the notification uh, listener was triggered. So that is really useful feature as well. And finally, we need to test our error code. And to test it out, we just uh, actually plug a notification. And let's say the error is, the error is this one. And to basically generate an error, let's close our, our instance, basically terminate it. And also, uh, if you play with AWS, don't want to, uh, don't forget to terminate your instances because it could end up some uh, ridiculous bills. So we just terminate our instance. And if I run that again, as you can see, the error is error. Yeah, <laughs> that's very really defined. But anyway, it gets triggered and if I click on it, as you can see, it will trigger that one as well. Okay, so this is the basic usage of Node Notifier package and SSH2 package. Uh, there are obviously much more complicated things can be done using these packages. However, uh, this is basically an introductory video. So if you want to learn more about that, be sure, be make sure to check out the official documentations of both packages. And that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video and find it helpful. If that is the case, make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing to see more content like this. See you next time. Take care.